Gary Goddard. This is Todd Bell. 7-0 West Branch after one quarter of play. And right now, the total offense, 57-29. West Branch is in favor. They are in favor of the score as well. 7-0 after the touchdown pass from Griffith to Knox. And right now, Gary, the Quakers have the ball at their own 45, and they need to get 25 yards for a first down. This will be a tough call. You'd probably you'd like to see it on the air, in the air here, but uh, West Branch did a good job in swarming the quarterback Martin on the last time they tried to throw the ball, so we'll have to see what Coach Boren calls here. Third and 25. Brian Jones will come to the near side, the only wide receiver. Two tight ends. Martin will look to throw with plenty of time downfield as McLaughlin with the catch. He's popped right away, shy of the first down, but, but they're only three yards short. They may go for it. It may not even be that. Great throw for Martin. McLaughlin with great concentration to make the catch and hang on. Well, with the ball on the 30, you could, you know, elect to try and pin him in deep. Or, right, it'll be fourth down and three. The ball on the branch, 33. And the Hennessey They're going institutions, they are going for it. Murray brings the play in. They'll need the 30-yard line. They'll need to get that football across the 30. Right to left here in the second quarter. Quakers could use a big play. Two tight ends, McLaughlin, the H back on the right side. Davis, Humphreys in the backfield. It's McLaughlin coming in motion. The handoff to Humphreys, not even close. They ran the play to the right side. It got them so many yards on two successive plays, and this time the Warriors were ready for it. A gain of a yard, and the Warriors will take over. Well, it was worth a shot. The Quakers with that nice pass from Martin get him in, getting him in that position. And Westbridge did a good job stopping him about two yards shy of the first down. So they will start the, their drive on, the, on their own 32. First down and 10. And Martin not come to the near side. Candle. It appears Frank to the left, and it is, and he comes in motion to the near side. Two-step drop, the throw, and the catch by Frank. 35-40, puts his head down to the 45. 13 yards and a first down. Steve Frank with the catch. 5'11", 180, and a junior, and a first down. West Branch doing a good job in moving the sticks and doing a, a fine job in uh, mixing it up here. That time the pass on the first down. Brings the ball close to midfield. Quaker defense could use a stop, and soon West Branch's offense is working pretty well here in this opening ball game. Martig knocked to the left. Frank goes in motion to the left. Candle to the near side. Turn to give us to Nesmith. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. And no gain on first down from the 45. Chad Hoffman made the tackle. Hoffman, a super stop, broke through the line, lost a one on that play. Second down and 11 from the 44 yard line. Well, looking back at last year's game, Jeff Morris had an outstanding game. Morris was 16 of 24 for 246 yards through a pair of touchdowns, including the game winner in overtime. Quakers, Jason Humphreys ran for nearly 100 yards. He had a touchdown on just eight carries. As the Quakers outrushed West Branch, 193 to 65 yards. Frank to the near side, back to the left again. Griffith on second and 11, drops plenty of time, pumps once, throws over the middle, it's caught, first down. Martig with the catch at the 42-yard line. 15 yards on the pass play to Martig, and another first down for the Warriors, their third through the air tonight, fifth of the evening. Boy, Griffith did a fine job in threading the needle to Martig, but that whole play was set up by great protection from the offensive line from West Branch. Remember that all day for that one. Wolf, Yagi, Lissy, Phillips, Dorn, all with a fabulous job protecting their signal caller. First down and 10-9, 10 to play first half, and the Warriors on top by a touchdown. Frank to the left side will make it three wide receivers over there, and they hand off to Nesmith, and again it's Hoffman who makes the sack three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Somebody needs to put a body on Chad Hoffman. Kind of hard to when you're 285. He's uh, not a little guy to try and stop, and that time he picked him up and threw him down. Lost a two. Lost about two on the play. It'll be second down. 
Shiloh Brown will check out of the ball game. We'll try and check in with A.J. McLeod here as this second quarter rolls on. He'll be back with us at halftime with all kinds of information for us, hopefully some scores from around the area. Knock in motion to the left, comes back to the right. On second and 12, the handoff to Nesbitt just puts his head forward and ran into Hoffman again. Funk. Holy cow, no gain on second down. Third and 12 upcoming for the Warriors. 6'2", 285, you're not going to run through the guy. <laughs> Ball just inside the Quaker 45-yard line as Shiloh Brown will bring in the play. It's funny because he put his head down with all the intention of doing it, too. <laughs> Throwing down for the Warriors. Candle to the left. To the right, it's Martig. Shiloh Brown in the slot. And Frank comes in motion to the near side, making it three to the right. Griffith two-step drop, throws. It's incomplete, looking for Shiloh Brown. Throw is well behind the receiver. And it's going to be third down, make it fourth down. And the Warriors look like they're going to go ahead and punt. We'll check in with A.J. if he's ready after this punt. As the Warriors will be kicking it away from Salem's 44. Well, they should be able to pin the Quakers back deep with a good punt. Last one wasn't all that great. Now the Quakers are going to use a timeout. So we'll go ahead and pause for a brief timeout. We'll come back with the Warriors punt. This is high school football on WSOM. Set to punt it away, and Jason Humphreys back deep at his own 10-yard line. Shiloh Brown to kick on fourth and 12. Snap just a little bit high, but Brown grabs it easily. Wobbly kick, and it's going to bounce at the 20 and out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. A.J. McLeod, what's going on back in high school uh, control center? All right, A.J., we'll be back with him at halftime of tonight's game. 7.31 to play here in the first half. Gary, a big drive coming up for Salem. This is a big drive. Uh, down by seven with 7.31 to go. Last year, this was the typical patented Salem drive. You take a lot of time off the clock and uh, a lot of yardage here, too, but they're starting this one deep. 29-yard punt. First down, and he give us to Davis, I believe, up the middle, and not much room, maybe a yard. I think it was Humphreys. He tried to just dart his way through there. Yes, you are correct. So not much there on that play. Second down. And we'll still call it 10 yards to go for the Quakers. Time of possession, lopsided 6.50, or make it 7.54 in the first quarter to just 4.06 for Salem. Jones to the near side. McLaughlin in motion comes this way. And the give will be to Davis off the left side. Slides through, not much room to the about the 18-yard line. That'll be a gain of three and third down and seven coming up for Salem. This is a big third down, too. They don't want to give the ball back. And if they're forced to punt, West Branch will have good field position. So big third and seven here with the ball on the 18. Wide receiver split to the right side for the Quakers. That is Charles Hughes. And the give will be to Humphreys around the right side. Oh, tripped up, but may have stretched the football forward enough. I think it's he got it on the dive. Of course, it's not where the ball is. Yeah. It's where the knee is. It's going to be enough for a first yep. down. Got to like that. A big run from Humphreys. Huh. Martin tripped him up, but not in time. Humphreys went airborne and just laid himself out, and he did get it. 
close call, but a big first down conversion, or third down conversion. That's the first one for Salem tonight. They are now one for three. Third first down for Salem. Hughes checks out Murray back in. Quakers have got a couple of good-sized tight ends in Murray and Hendershot, both at 6-3, so they're going to be big targets for Martin to throw to this year. See what the Quakers elect to do. Two tight ends with McLaughlin split to the right. The turn, the give to Humphreys on the misdirection, slips through. Five yards, six yards, dragging tacklers. He'll pick up about eight as he gets to the 34-yard line. Good run from Jason Humphreys. Makes his way through a hole and then made something out of it after that. It's up to the offensive line to make the hole. After that, it's all up to the running back, and Humphreys did a good job getting nine on that. So that'll be second and one with the ball on the 34. Seven carries, 49 yards for Jason Humphreys. Backs are split, Davis and Humphreys. Again, the two tight ends. Humphreys to the right this time, slips a tackler, close to another quicker first down. He was just able to avoid Kevin Smith, who almost made the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. The official throws down the beanbag past the first down marks. So that'll move the chains again. Stop the clock at 5.05 to go here until halftime. The Quakers on a drive, but they're still in their own territory. Ball on the 35. Well, if Salem is able to score or come up with something on this drive, we'll look back to that big play from Humphreys, an eight-yard gain for a first down deep in their own territory. Jones to the left. It's going to be McLaughlin split to the right. Tight end to the right side, and Martin to throw with time. Throws downfield as Jones with the catch at the 42-yard line. First down, Salem on a fine throw from Martin. Boy, a nice spiral to Martin. He threw it down, and Jones went down to get it. He was the only one that would have been able to catch that ball. So the Quakers on first down, trying to throw a little uh, su surprise into West Branch, and they get big yardage. Now they're in West Branch territory with four and a half to go here to halftime. Ball at the 41 on the 24-yard pass play from Martin to Jones. Jim Martin looking confident two for two in his passing as he thread, thread the needle earlier to Todd McLaughlin. 7 nothing West Branch as they scored on their opening drive. Martin turns and gives to Humphreys. Right side through a hole, and he's got five yards. Make it six yards to the Warrior 35-yard line. And Salem building confidence on the far sideline. Well, Westbridge knows that Jason Humphreys is going to get that ball. The problem is uh, the offensive line for the Quakers right now doing a good job in opening up some holes for Humphreys, and he's getting four or five yards a pop now. Early in the game, it wasn't that big, but uh, now the hole's opening up. You're, you're right, Todd. The offensive line gelling here for Humphreys. The leader of the defense, Jim Ballard, checks out for a brief moment on second down and four yards to go for Salem. McLaughlin comes in motion to the left. Handoff Davis up the middle. They mix it up a bit. He'll gain a yard, maybe. Again, just as you mentioned, they expect Humphreys to get the ball, so every once in a while you have to mix in a Davis run. And that will gain well, maybe one on the play, so that'll make another key third down play here. This will be third and oh, a short five, a long four. And the Quakers, again, one for three on their third down conversions tonight, so you'll probably see them this two down territory here. Again, they'll go two tight ends of McLaughlin at the halfback. Hand off to Humphreys to the right side. Puts his head up field. Will be close to a Quaker first down. One indication says he has it, but I don't believe so. Well, the officials will stop the clock. That'll be a break for the Quakers at 2.52. Good crowd on hand here tonight. They'll be treated by two good band shows at halftime. Yeah, looks like it'll be a hair short. So fourth and less than a yard. So a important play here for the Salem Quakers. Humphreys will check out. Don't know if he was shaking up or if they're just going to try something here. A little quarterback sneak here or something. We'll have to see. Right up the center. Big play. And Todd McLaughlin jumped off sides. So no play. This will come back. They'll move it back five yards. Ryan Fritz, the ball carrier, is a play. Fritz was the player who replaced Humphreys. He is 5'8", 150. 
And again, a penalty killing the Quakers. Not so much the amount of penalties, it's where they're coming tonight. Is really hurting Salem. Boy, three penalties for 32 yards. Still, the Quakers will go for it. Clock winding down at 2.25 to go. This just might make it a passing situation on fourth down and a long five. Jones to the near side, McLaughlin to the right. It still remains Fritz and Davis in the backfield. Martin to throw again with time. Looks right, throws it over through Hendershot, who was wide open at the first down marker, and the Quakers will turn it over on downs. Martin had some protection that time again, just overthrew it on the sideline pass. Throw it to the big tight end, Hendershot, and the Warriors will take over now on their own 37 and Salem the last thing they want to do here in the final 207 of this half is to give up another score going down one at halftime would be okay for Salem they would get the ball to start the second half wind is behind the Warriors here in this second quarter candle to the near side Martig to the left and a flag this coming from the back judge could be too much time that's what it is so delay a game will back them up five yards. Quakers next week will have their home opener as they will take on Marlington. It's our home month. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> Four in a row home games for the Quakers. First down to 15 from 32 yards. So they move it back to the 32. Same setup for the Warriors. And Griffith on first down hands it to Shiloh Brown. Big hole up the middle and out to the 40-yard line. Tackled by Fenema. Coming up from his strong safety position, it's going to be a gain of seven on first down. Clock down to 152. Yeah, West Branch, I believe, with all three of their timeouts. Salem with two. And the clock, you're right, Todd, still ticking down. That'll be second down and eight now. Ball just inside the 40. Ballard in motion to the near side for the Warriors. Griffith two-step drop, throws, and the ball is caught coming down the right sideline to the 50 and to the 48-yard line. That is Dustin Watrick with the catch. His first play of the ball game, and he comes right in there, makes a big play. First down for West Branch inside Quaker territory. Little pick play there. They run Ballard out there, too, and they crisscross. And then Ballard becomes the blocker downfield. Nice play. Minute 25 to go, and the ball just resting inside Quaker territory. Martig to the near side, Candle to the left. Nesbeth and Brown in the backfield, and it's going to be a play fake and a throw. Griffith looks pressure downfield. This one will be tipped and intercepted at the 20 yard line with the pick is Bryant Bizon to the 40, 45, and brought down at the 47 yard line. Griffith might have held on to the ball a hair too long that time, trying to get something out of nothing. He was going to go down on that play. And he did get the ball to his receiver, but it was tipped up, and Bizon with the interception runs it back to the 46-yard line. And we'll have to see with exactly one minute to go if the Quakers will try to do something here. Just two timeouts. Now the clock running. Ooh, so Quakers the wasting a lot of time here. And some confusion. Jones will come to the near side. Looks like Humphreys is lined up in the slot. It's Martin to throw. Downfield. It is tipped and incomplete. Ballard's got a hand on it for the Warriors. Stops the clock with 38 seconds. There was about 15 seconds lost there for the Salem Quakers before they got to the line. But the incomplete pass will stop the clock. Again, they do have a good field goal kicker in Ben Henniga if they can and even get close. Jones checks out. It's going to be McLaughlin to the right. Two tight ends, Hendershot and Murray. Backs are split. And a straight drop back with time. They look to set up the screen, and Humphreys has the catch. Cuts back to the middle of the field. Trumbles the football. It's still loose. Who's got it? It's going to be Quaker football. It looked like Mike Colich may have nope. been able to fall on it. Late flag. And a couple of Warriors quickly applauded. Let's see. It will stop the clock with 23 seconds to go. Well, that flag very, very late, way after the play. So in all likelihood, 
Might be a personal foul. We'll have to see. And remember now, two personal fouls this year against a certain player, individual, and he's automatically ejected from the game. That's a new rule this year, so you must keep that in mind as well. Don't think that was the call, however. I'm not sure. They uh, call it on sports, but like okay. on the Quakers. Takes the ball from the 50. Well, that in effect will take away any scoring threat for the half here for the Quakers. 23 seconds to go, and now the ball way back. Might just see Salem sit on this. Second down, they could just do that. West Branch still with all three timeouts, but Salem could effectively just run out the clock here with the knee. It'll be third down and about 24, 22. Quakers don't need to run a play if no. they don't want. Clock is moving, but they will send Jones to the left and McLaughlin to the right. And they'll hand it off to Davis up the middle squirts to the right. We'll gain three yards, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. The West Branch Warriors on their first drive of the game march 66 yards, aided by a Quaker penalty after a punt that gave the football back to West Branch. They then went on to score, and that has been the only score of the ball game. West Branch on top, 7 to nothing, and it's been a very good first half of play from Clinton Aycock Stadium. A.J. McLeod is back at the AM600 studios, and A.J., tell us what's going to happen here at halftime. 